the first question I'm going to ask you guys is, um, I want to ask about casual sex, right? Um, because you guys are in modern day, modern day 2021. That's the culture today. Modern, that's the dating culture today about casual, mm -hmm. casual sex, right? It's yes. all about casual sex. So mm -hmm. uh, I have my views on it. I'm, I'm not a big believer in casual sex. I don't think it helps people uh, be able to find commitment, commitment with each other mm -hmm. if you're, you know, uh, but that's just my view. Uh, I actually have a reaction video. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play for you guys. We're gonna react to it. Uh, this is a oh. video from a uh, from a doctor. Uh, she studies uh, evolution evolutionary psychology, the difference between men and women, and especially when it comes to sex. So she has a very interesting point of view, um, and uh, I'm gonna listen to it, and we're gonna react to it, and then I'll ask you you uh, and I'll ask you ladies what you guys think about it. But let me so let me it. Let me play the video real quick. I mean, I have so many young women who would reach out to me saying they're really confused because they're being told particular messages either by the media um, or or just they're being told if you are a strong and empowered woman that you believe that you are no different from men in any way, including in sex. And so you should pursue sex the way that men do or you should enjoy casual sex as much as men and if you don't there's something wrong with you and so I get these young women who are telling me that they are really confused they're really unhappy so I wrote that chapter for them and what I find really interesting is that um, I, I talk about how evolutionary psychology should not be seen as sexist evolutionary psychology is still very much a part of who we are um, yes birth control exists but it can't override the millions and millions of years preceding it and to pretend that it doesn't exist does us a disservice so a lot of people will say that evolutionary psychology is degrading to women it says that women should have stereotypical gender roles or that we should be submissive things like that um, all right so i'm gonna pause it right there ladies all right stop to share so um the people that watch my my podcast uh uh then my view is when it comes to casual sex and uh I always tell people, you know, the, the men and women are different. Even though we live, we live in a society today that tries to push women that uh, the biological differences doesn't matter and we're equal. Um, for me, I do believe that, that there's, there's certain things that men can do that's, and certain things that women can do based on our biology and there's limits to it, right? Uh, one of the things uh, I believe is the reason why casual sex is not, is not beneficial for a woman is because for a woman, in order for a woman to, in order to, in order for a woman to have sex with a man, she must emotionally invest into that man, right? Yeah. She must, so the thing is, if you always, as a woman, if you're having multiple sex part, sexual partners and you're just having sex with all these random men, that means you're emotionally investing in these men and these men are leaving, abandoning, abandoning in you. So you're going to have a lot of emotional problems and trauma from all these men that you're going to emotionally invest to, have sex with you, abandon you, and, and then it just causes a lot of issues with the, with, the, with the woman. But for a man, because we're different, we don't have to emotionally. Men can just have sex and just be and purely be physical. We don't we don't have we necessarily we don't have to necessarily invest emotionally. So that's why for a lot of guys, he, they can have sex multiple partners and still be healthy. And, and then when they do find a good woman, he can still be healthy when he has a relationship with a good woman and commit to that woman and, and they can have a, a good relationship. But for the for for a woman, if she's going out and having uh, casual sex with all these types of men, she's more than likely going to have a lot of emotional issues. So it's not beneficial for her and also. You also want to add the fact that she took the risk of pregnancy if she, if she gets pregnant. There's also there's another issue that's going to add on to her life. So I'm not a big supporter of casual sex. Uh, I think people should be in committed relationships with one person at a time. And if you can avoid sex, but I think that's one of the biggest issues today in our, in the, why a lot of women have insecurity issues, why a lot of women don't trust men, have like have a negative pers uh, perspective towards men is because we're, mm -hmm. this, the cult, society is telling them to go have sex. And then when you have sex, you end up having a kid with the wrong partner. And then, you know, that can cause a lot more issues, right? I mean, baby daddy issues, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right? But also you're gonna, you know, you're gonna have a lot of emotional trauma because all the men in your life failed you and abandoned you. And now it's gonna put a lot of, and then guys see that. And they're like, you know what? I don't wanna deal with that, with that girl. I'm gonna go, you know, that's just too much trauma to me. And also she may have a kid already, or, um, you know, for a lot of guys, they don't like a woman that's, ho that's a hoe, right? That's promiscuous. And you guys already know this, men don't like hoes. They don't want to wife a hoe. So I believe that casual sex does a disservice for, for a woman. If she's looking for a good man, if she's looking for commitment, if she's looking for marriage, then don't do casual sex. But if you're out, but I do see a lot, a lot of women today, they're uh, going out there having casual sex, but they wonder why, they're confused why men are not running up to their face. Hey, please marry, please marry me. <laughs> All right. So, but that's my thoughts, ladies. Uh, and also, you know, that's, 
that's a, she's a doctor. She's done her research, so she's not basing her opinions based on feelings. She's based on research. This this scientific data that shows that if a woman has sex, she's more than likely to have a lot of issues that come with it. But I'll open it up to you, ladies. What do you guys think about casual sex? Do you think it's a good idea? It's a good thing, or do you, are you guys against casual sex? Um, I'll start with you, Mabel. What do you, what's your thoughts on it? Um, I, casual casual sex is um something I'm not I've never done before, to be honest. Yeah. Um. But like I feel like because because it's us women, if we have like so many different sexual partners and just like casually having like casual sex, we'll be known as the hoe. Yeah. We're obviously gonna be like called the hoe or or you know, like just a uh, pastimer. But when yeah. it comes for having casual sex, they get praised for it. So it's kind of mm -hmm. different. So yeah, that yeah, that's all I know about that. Um yeah. Okay. So you're sorry for you personally. You don't uh you you uh you don't you don't believe in casual sex. You know if you want to attract a, a committed relationship, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Um, Neelu, what's what's your thoughts, Neelu? You know, I think first of all, it's really great that you're bringing this up because um, uh, and and it's important that you're bringing this up as a man, will. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. um, because I I think there's a way in which um. Somehow, I think women need to hear this from a man, mm -hmm. a man's perspective. Yeah. And what I will say is, um, I, you know, I have some controversial views. I think in general, this, um, so, that societies are set up to disempower women. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of ways to disempower women, because actually women have the power to birth. And that is like the most powerful creative force on mm -hmm. the planet. Mm -hmm. So you want, you, you know, you want to try and disempower women because if they were empowered, you're dealing with, you know, like a social force that's like uh, destabilizing for society. Mm -hmm. So if you tell women casual sex, casual sex, you're equal, go have casual sex. I actually think that's a way of disempowering a woman. Um, mm -hmm. When, uh, when, uh, when women unconsciously or without thinking it through, that's what casual means. Yeah. Are just going off and doing something, which is, um, it's a deep, this is what I teach online. Um, sex is a deep and powerful energetic exchange. Mm -hmm. All right. If you're mm -hmm. going to just casually do it, you're, you're depleting your own power, you're depleting your own um, resources. Mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. generally, men who want to have casual sex, what they want is they don't have the ability to generate feminine energy within themselves mm -hmm. and they want to deplete it from a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So um, I, I think it's a way of women disempowering themselves. I think the way to empower yourself around your sexuality for women is to be highly selective. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Not only to be highly selective, but then to also be very specific of the about the kind of sex and very conscious about the kind mm -hmm. of sex that you want to have. Yeah. This is another way in which women get disempowered, right? They mm -hmm. don't have a voice now. They just have to go with whatever is happening in the moment. But what if as a woman you could say, here's the kind of sex I want to have with you, and I need to have a one-hour conversation about this. We need to have multiple conversations about the kind of sex that I like to have. Mm -hmm. And let me see, let me interview you and see if you're the right kind of person. But mm -hmm. we don't allow that for women. We're just supposed to go have a few drinks, go in there and take mm -hmm. off your clothes and, you know, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. but, but have you, you know, does a woman get to say, well, I, I don't actually like doing that. And, and I don't just mean mm -hmm. physical things. I mean, even just the energetic, you mm -hmm. know, like we, I'm now I'm going on and on, Will. So stop me, with, <laughs> whatever you want. It's we all good. We live in a porn culture right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, a, a lot of uh, pornography is not about consent. Mm -hmm. It is about disempowering mm -hmm. the female, mm -hmm. feminine, yeah. um, and, and the masculine. I mean, it, it, those images that are being portrayed are not of human beings who are connecting around um, love and empowerment. They're connecting around shame and disempowerment and, um, you know, yeah around that yeah like porn, porn, you know it's it's maybe it's about like oh doing things that um are unacceptable so it makes you feel powerful like i'm gonna do this anyway even though my mama wouldn't want me to 
You know, my yeah. dad does not want me doing this, but I'm going to yeah. do it. Um, so, you know, there is a rebelliousness to it. Um, but ultimately, pornography and pornography culture are not about empowering the masculine or the feminine. Yeah. Hey, I do have a question for Mabel because I know because uh, um, I know you're, I know you're in your 20s. Because um, one of the things you said, society is pushing women, right? A lot of women out there today are having casual sex because that's what society is doing, but they don't really want to. But yeah. they feel like they feel like that they're gonna no man is gonna want them or no man is gonna they're gonna attract no guys if they don't want to give up sex. But let me ask you, maybe like your your friends, right? The, or the friends or the women in your in your circle, is that why you see with a lot of girls that you, uh, your friends and like everybody's just trying to have casual sex or, uh, yeah. like like you know, can you, can you share some of that like your experience? Yeah, sometimes um, when we're having like when we all like say for example, we just had a recent work party, yeah, and they like normal drinks everyone's drinking having a good time and half of the time everyone's always talking about oh hookups like oh yeah I'm gonna hook up with this guy I'm gonna hook up with that guy and sometimes I have to sit there and wonder like why like well what's the whole point you're just gonna hook up and then you're gonna come tomorrow at work awkward and stuff because like you don't want to come and see the same guy that you hooked up with and then um with with some with some of the girls they Sometimes they just want to have sex just for the pleasure of having sex. But mm -hmm. um, so like they'll ask me the same questions if if I want to, but I don't really want to. It's more because like once once you have sex, it's like you just you don't have the connection anymore. Like if it's just casual sex, like you you don't feel the connection as as well. And then there was like no point in sharing yourself like that. Yeah, yeah, because. Like I told you guys before, it like you know, if you if you emotion if you invest emotionally to somebody and they and mm. then that that person doesn't reciprocate it back to you, it causes a lot of eternal issues, right? Now you're questioning yourself. That's why a lot of girls may have like low self esteem. They're like, oh my god, this guy, I had sex with this guy, and he just totally totally yeah. ghost ghost ghosted me. Like, am I it's like my am, am I something wrong with me? Am I not beautiful enough? Yeah. Right? And then yeah. you see, and then you see the same guy with another girl in the same workplace mm. and then the next <laughs> right the next now there's like now you're comparing yourself to other, other girls and now these girls are like wow mm. like, wow what's wrong with me but there was nothing wrong with you but that's what happens when you're just sleeping with other guys instead of just being yeah. with investing to one guy that's gonna not only have sex with you but he's gonna stick around and appreciate you mm. right yeah all right all right um let me ask you ladies uh did you guys ever uh experience uh did you did you guys ever go through your casual sex phase like you know um and uh in, 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 in the past or were you guys always in this uh this perspective where you want to be in a committed relationship because it'd be interesting to see like like how like how was it when if you guys did go through the casual sex phase did you guys ever go through that phase at one time in your life no <laughs> no no and in fact i have been um voluntarily celibate for the past six years yeah and um you know there have been potentials you know, potential. And, and I just thought, um, you know, if this is not going to be something that is going to be, uh, I mean, okay, it doesn't have to be like we spend the rest of our lives together, but at least it could be like we help each other, you know, like okay. we really kind of like help each other in a way that is like, empower, you know, like it's powerful. And I was like, this is not going to be powerful for me. Mm -hmm. So why, sh I'm not going to do this. Like, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this if I feel like it's going to elevate me to the next level. And mm -hmm. that's the difference between casual and something that's sacred. Like if this is going to bring me to my next level of wherever I want to be in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know, um, and now at this point, I'm like, <laughs> this sounds so silly. I was thinking this today. I'm like, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to meet a man at my level. So like, maybe, you know, like, um, I don't know, like wh what's, what's going to happen next year? Cause is there anybody on this planet who is now at my level? I have no idea. Mm. So, you know, like I just don't, um, yeah. like you can just tell <clears throat> the other thing that happens is if you're celibate for a while and you know, this is why a lot of like religions say to stay celibate before you get married, if you're celibate for a while, you're you're you become like so tuned in that like um like this happens to me all the time i'll like talk to somebody on the phone and afterwards i'm like what is going on with me and i'm like that must be what that 
mofo was feeling and yeah. then i just picked up on it over the telephone so there's no way that he is gonna be inside my body with all of that going on if on a oh, phone call okay. i'm like you know like yeah. overwhelmed with his like whatever you know his whatever <clears throat> I don't know what to call it. Energy, whatever. Yeah. Like this, this is not happening. You know, this is not happening. I, I would say this, the, the good thing about being celibate, right? Um, for a woman is you'll be able to uh, evaluate your men very objectively. So because your emotions not involved, you'll be able to look at him and see all the red, the red flags. The thing is, mm. if you, if you, if you have, cause you already know this ladies, once you have <clears> sex with a man, you're emotionally, you, you emotionally invested to him some in some way, or some, or some degree. So a lot of times I see these ladies, right? You get, like when I look at the guy that they're trying to get commitment from, you see all the red flags. I'm like, why are you with this guy? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? But they can't. But the thing is, once you, when your emotions are involved, you overlook all the red flags because you're emotionally invested. But if you don't have sex and celebrate, you can take a look back. All right. Oh, no. All these, I see all the red flags and you can walk away from it. But it's hard to walk away from a guy that you had sex with because now you at some, some level, you emotionally connected with them. And then there's like a, mm -hmm. and a lot of women, they want to date the potential, right? There's a potential, hopefully this guy would, you know, you know, commit to me and then this may be to my dream guy. But that's why I think is, I told ladies like, you know, be, be celibate so you can be able to pick, be more selective and be, and have a wiser choice. But if you're just giving it up, <laughs> you know, just throwing, you know, giving it up out there, then that's why I like, I see a lot of, uh, a lot of girls, like uh, they make the, they get emotionally involved and they pick the wrong man, All right? Yeah. Well, it's hard, you know, we live at, at um, I mean, I, do, do being a therapist for like 15 years now, yeah. people are lonely. They could have, they could have a wife and five kids in their house. They could be part of a huge church community and they are full on lonely and mm -hmm. why? Because yeah. they can't really be themselves. Like they're, <clears throat> they're half themselves, you know, there's a part of themselves that they don't really get to be. And then you sit with a therapist and you're, you're like your entire self, <laughs> for just an hour a week, but like that hour a week is so powerful that it impacts your entire life. You're like, I can't do this anymore. I, I need to be my whole self with like everybody because it feels so good, mm -hmm. you know? And that's mm -hmm. the other thing about casual sex. How can you bring your whole self? You bring a sliver of yourself to the experience. And usually the sliver of yourself that you bring is the part of you that's like impulsive, adventurous, what I would call like the shadow self, the, the, the part that doesn't care, the, the part that's like, uh, whatever, you know, like, um, it, but, but that's a sliver of who you are. Mm. I think, Will, what you're saying is after the fact, especially for women, then you realize, oh, that was just a sliver of me, but the rest of me like really does care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Maple, let me ask you this, like, because uh, I guess you don't believe in casual sex. How do you stay like, how do you, because, you know, there's a lot of pressure, right? Society, casual sex, but you're trying to mm -hmm. go against what everybody else is doing. Like, how do you, how do you stay committed to what you believe in and not, and not mm -hmm. try to uh, do what everybody, and not feel temp tempted to do what everybody else is doing? Um, sometimes I, I honestly just vibe by myself. So unless I like find someone who's actually like got the same vibe as me, that like, that's when I know, I oh, okay, that's the guy. But like, like other people, they'll go and like, look, okay, he's hot, yo, I'm going to do it with him because he's hot. Like, plainly because he's just good looking. Yeah. <clears throat> After that, they complain, oh, yeah, this hot guy doesn't message me back. Like, that's, okay, that's, <laughs> come on. Like, like you couldn't tell, like, from his vibe or, or something like that. I don't know. Because I've, I've never done the whole casual sex thing before, so I, I wouldn't know. But other than that, like, I just, I just go for mostly their vibe and like the way they treat other people like i yeah. i sit back and i observe yeah so that, that's why i that's why i brought up the the video of that professor right and, and she's pretty much explained the difference between men and women because um you have to understand when women when women choose to have sex with a man uh women have sex for the for the women have sex for the purpose of a potential relationship Right, mm -hmm. but for men, we have sex purely just for sex, and that's why men, men, men and women need women need to understand the difference between men. Like when when they when I, whenever I hear girls, oh my god, I gave it up, I had sex with him, he never responded. I was like, yeah, he just that's what men do. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> he got the sex like that. He may have told you all the things you wanted to hear, and, and you know, but that's you know, that's that's just the world we live in. 
mean, men will manipulate you, tell you whatever you want to hear, so they get the ultimate goal. But that's the difference between between men and women. Women have sex for the, but hopefully, like for a potential relationship, but men don't, you know. And if a man wants to be in a committed relationship with you, he will uh, he will do more than the sex. Like he will stay around, and you'll be able to get commitment from him. Um, mm. But but let me. Uh, I had a question for I did had a question for Mabel. Um, is uh, do you find it so because you want to you know you're not into casual sex. Uh, do you find it hard uh, to attract uh, to attract men? Like, because I'm sure the men uh, still still try to uh, pursue you, but then you have to tell them, look, I'm not into casual sex. Like, I'm looking for commitment. Like, how's that experience for you? And how's the response when you tell them, hey, I'm looking for commitment? Do they well, like what's the, what's their reaction? Oh, uh, I just tell them. <laughs> like, um, with with some guys, um sometimes when they reply to my stories or photos or stuff stuff like that it's always like oh yeah you're so sexy like they try to use the right words but it doesn't really faze me because it's not really my right words yeah. so um I just tell them straight up like oh oh yeah that's cool and then I just leave it at that like I don't reply after that so have you ever have you ever, have you ever uh, went on a date you know or with a guy and you, and you told him that you don't do casual sex um yeah and how did how One. did you how did you respond? Oh, uh, I just uh I didn't want to be mean, but um I told him oh, nah, I'm not into that stuff, and then told him to drop me off back. <laughs> what, like, do you, what, 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 what do you what what do you say? <laughs> what do you say? Oh, he was like, oh yeah, that's fine. And he didn't um message me back, so I was like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Yeah. But, but, but I don't know if you caught that nearly like she said that she didn't want to be mean. It's got to it's got into a point where you actually feel bad for for having standards, especially when it comes yeah. to protecting your sexuality, which you shouldn't even feel that way. You know what I'm saying? But because of society pushing this culture, now the women, the good women, the good quality women that do want to uh, protect their sexuality for the right man, they feel they feel like oh, I'm probably terrible. I'm mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a terrible, <laughs> you know, I'm being mean yeah. to this guy, but. No, you're doing exactly what you're, you know, that's, that's the best way to do it. Um, and also, Nilo, I want to ask you that same question because you've been celibate for six years. Like, uh, how, how's, how's that uh, when, you, when you do uh, have uh, go on dates or have, you know, go on dates with men or have conversations with men and you bring that up, like, what's, their, what's the, their typical response when they find out that you want to be celibate? Well, I mean, I haven't gone out on a date. <laughs> Oh, okay. Years. Um, I mean, I, you know, it, it's been much more organic. Um, it's been maybe like, uh, I, I mean, maybe I went on a couple of lunch. I went to on a couple of lunches and then it just oh, wow. never went anywhere. So the situations have been much more organic. It's been like we're friends and, you know, um, it's starting to change. Um, and then, I mean, I, I, you know, what I say is I'm already a single mother. And for me, sex is yeah. never going to be casual. Yeah. Like I already, um, yeah. I, I can't imagine being a single mother to two kids mm -hmm. and I'm not going to do that to myself or my, or my daughter. So like, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then I'll say, I mean, I don't know, you know, I have not lost friendships, but I, I've not lost friendships, but I, I definitely distance, you know, distance came in the relationship in three, three friendships for sure. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll, what, I, what I've said is I've been like, you know, there are like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of women that you can like do this with. And um, like, I'm just, I'm not her. Like we, we need to, we, you know, mm -hmm. either we're, this is going to be like, a, you know, I'll be like, you know, are you prepared to like provide child support? Like, I mean, we just need to talk about that because I don't get child support. Like Me. I'm not getting child support. So like if I have a second kid, like I'm not working, first of all, and, and then I'm going to need some child support. And, you know, it's like a funny, it's funny. it will be like, well, how much do you need? I'm like, well, you know, listen, I mean, I, we, you know, we, we really, we should be talking like five, five K because like maybe a little more because like, how am I going to work with two kids? Like, I don't want to be working with two kids. And, you know, it's funny because he's like, seriously, five K you want five K. I was like, yeah, well, 5k what about 10 can you do 10 you know and it's funny but it, and it's so it's silly but it's also getting to the point which is that like I can't I can't have casual sex because I I cannot be a single mother to two children um, unless I know for sure this guy is like even if it doesn't work out I'm gonna be there for you right? oh, okay you see what I mean yeah so, yeah 
I mean, if the conversation is serious, you know, what, what if he did say, well, listen, if you get pregnant, of course, I'm going to be there for you. We, we may not get married, mm -hmm. but um, I'm going to be a father. I'm going to be a provider for you. You can count on me. Like, you're not going to be raising these kids alone. Yeah. Right. Um, but the conversation never really <clears throat> progressed to that point. So I'm like, why? I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> you know, it would have been different if, if they said, oh, yeah, of course, Neil, you can count on me for the rest of our lives. I'm going to be there for you. Yeah. And both your kids. If we have a kid together, I'm going to be there for both kids because mm -hmm. it's not fair for me to be only there for one kid. Yeah. You see and, what I mean? and that's and that's and that's why for me, like I'm trying to push like uh, I'm trying to push to be anti casual sex and be and focus on being super selective because like the the, like the, the doctor said, like the 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 cost of uh, the cost of uh, the risk or, or investment is gonna it's higher for the women because you get pregnant. So, you get pregnant. yeah, so like that's why it's good for you to be very super selective. So you find a man that's gonna stick around um, for for the, for the child. But if you're just going out there have a random uh, be with random men, then don't be surprised if the guy doesn't stick around. Well, you know? and here's my standard. Well, this is how how far my standard has gone. Yeah. In my head, I'll be like. Could I put all of my money and my name in this man, in, in this, in my, in my house, in this man's name? Mm -hmm. And do I trust him to take care of me and yeah. my child? Yeah. And if the answer to that is no, I really don't need to entertain yeah, anything yeah, yeah. else. Exactly. But like, if I can say yes, I could put all my <clears throat> money, to put my house and everything <clears throat> I own in this man's name, and I am for sure 100% he will take care of us. Even you know what I mean? Then I'm like, yeah, yeah okay. Then I then I'll you know, are we allowed to curse? I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, okay. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. Then I'll fuck you. Like, yeah. If I I know that if all my money was in your name, like I know for sure, like you got me. Yeah, we can fuck. Yeah. But it just hasn't happened. You know, I've not met a man who I would put <clears throat> my all my money in his name, and I would be like, here, you can have my body too, because I trust you with my body. You know, okay. I had just doesn't happen. <laughs> All right. I do want to ask it's you. It's a lady, high standard, right? Yeah, yeah. Changes the whole game. Exactly, exactly. Which is which is you you have to be, especially when you're talking about like if you want the a high quality father and a family, like you should be very have, have high standards to the type of man you're gonna allow into your life. I do want to ask you guys ladies a question because this is one of the things that I always women get mad or I always trigger women, right? Sometimes one thing that Neil said was like the disempowered, uh, this movement, you know, to empower women, which I'm all for. But a lot of, but the thing is, I, uh, I'm all about empowerment for both men and women, but I do also understand the biological differences between men and women, right? And what we can do because we're, because men and women are designed for different purposes based on our biology. So that's why a lot of women will say, oh my God, how come men can have multiple sexual partners, but women can't? And I would explain my point of view is because men can, don't, don't get emotionally vested into having uh when they have sex it's just physical but then for women you guys have to emotionally invest because that's how women are you're the more nurturing caring and emotional gender mm -hmm. right so i do want to ask you do you guys have friends like like you know because you know if i say that that you know because for me like if a guy has sex i'm i'm cool with it right most of us because even if a woman has sex i'm against it but for a lot of girls like, oh my god he's uh <laughs> he's trying to suppress women <laughs> he's a misogynist yeah. <laughs> he's sexist <laughs> You know, women can do the, everything that men can do. I'm like, no, we can't because sexual dimorphism, we're different. Yeah. You know, that's that's why we have double standards. But let me ask you, Mabel, do you have friends like that? Like, you know, that, uh, that they have that ideology. Like, you know what? If a man have, have you know, if a man can be a hoe, I can be a hoe. <laughs> if a man, man can have sexual yeah. with a bunch of partners, I can be have <laughs> multiple sexual partners. <laughs> yeah, well, you no, have friends like that? Yeah, I do. Um. I have this one friend who's very like who's very much like that and um sometimes she at the end of the day she always comes back and she's like hurt she's hurt all over again and she's <laughs> of course hurt. I'm sitting there trying to comfort this idiot and like I, I just don't understand like like come on like you you want to be out here with like trying to get the same energy as like all these guys having sex with like multiple partners and then you <clears> try the same thing, but it doesn't work out because like like us girls in our heads it's it's completely different we might think we might think oh yeah i can do what that guy's doing but low-key in our heads like like at the end of the day we're we still end up hurt so you know she's she's always the one that ends up hurt and i always have to tell her well it's not really 
anyone else's fault but yours because you're out here trying to trying to do what what everyone else is doing yeah you give her some good advice for her <laughs> she doesn't listen oh i just tell her it's because <laughs> like i've her like multiple advice like throughout the years and she doesn't listen so so like uh, like it, it gets <clears throat> tiring because you keep saying the same things over and over again she doesn't listen so yeah yeah yeah, I know if a lot of women when they when they when I say that uh in public, like they get mad, oh my god, like that's you know, it's uh that's met that's uh that's misogynistic for me to have a standard for men and have a different standard for women than that. But for me it's just like no, because we're different, right? So there's certain things that women can do that men can do, certain things men can do, women can do, you know. Look, I wasn't the creator, I'm not the creator, all right. You know, go go ask your creator. <laughs> 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 this is how we were designed, it's just it's just biology. But uh, but like I said, you know, we live in a modern we live in a society today that we, nobody wants to listen uh, to the data to the facts. But people just have their own subjective truth, and then whatever their truth is, that's truth. 